Welcome back. Once again, we're using the Pixflow photo editing program to create transparent images. Last time, I showed you how to use the magic wand tool, the paint bucket tool, and the color palette to create an image with a transparent background. But unfortunately, not all images are as friendly or as easy to work with as the flower that we used in the last tutorial. Some images have a very busy background, and it can make it more difficult to select a particular object and just use that. So, let's get started. I've already downloaded the images that I want to work with, so we're going to choose Open Image from the Computer. The image I want to use for this tutorial is Cute Dog. I'm going to choose that and then click OK. And it is a very cute little doggy here. I'm going to increase the size of my canvas here. Down at the bottom corner you'll see there's some little dots there and if you mouse over it, it sort of changes into this double-ended arrow. You click and drag to increase the size of your canvas. I also want to zoom in on this object so I'm going to use my shortcut key for zooming in which is control plus. You most certainly can go to view zoom in as well and that just gives me a larger image to work with. Last time we used the mag magic wand tool to select the area around the object we wanted. And if we do that again, we're quickly going to see that it's not going to be as nice as it was last time. It's not going to be as friendly. And as we click around, we can see that it's actually just selecting things that are very similar in color. And in some cases, the program has a very difficult time differentiating between where this flooring ends and where the doggy fluff begins. So it's sort of blended or blurred together which means that the magic wand tool is not going to be our best friend for selecting the dog this time. Instead we want to use the magic wand tool but before we do that we've got to deselect this area. So if we right click and choose deselect. Once again we're back to our original image. The lasso tool is located just up here above the magic wand tool. We're just going to click lasso tool there and we will notice that the lasso tool in this menu up here has a few different styles and it has a few settings that we can use as well. I'm going to set my feathering to about a 5 and what feathering does is it sort of softens the edges and makes things not as sharp around the edges. So I'm just going to type in a 5 there. Now the lasso tool is basically exactly what it sounds like. It's a lasso. If you swish it around, it's going to grab a hold of something. Right, right click to deselect. Now, if we wanted to, we could practice our surgeon hands and trace around the dog in the hope that we don't slip and it can be very difficult. And there we go. I've made a mistake and that's not what I wanted. It's also not as close to the edge of the dog as I would like. So that particular setting for the lasso tool isn't going to work for me. Let's deselect the area by right clicking and choosing deselect all. Instead I want to use the polygon setting. So that's right next to it and if I mouse over that you can see that it's going to highlight. I'm going to click on that. And what that does is it allows us to have more control of where the lasso is selected. So I want to get up sort of the top of this dog here top of the head and I'm going to click it to lock the lasso into place to say okay now it's time to start selecting and as you can see it's not grabbing a hold of anything I can move it around and it's just it's not cooperating that's because you have to click on the next spot that you want it to stick to so it's kind of like tracing in that sense but you're just clicking at various points or locations as you go around rounded surfaces, you need to click closer together so that you don't get a big long line like that. So I'm going to be very careful going slowly. It also allows me to decide what parts of the image I want and which ones I don't. In this case, I don't want all this extra fluff off the side, so I'm just not going to select that area. Delicate areas, you go nice and slow. Rounded areas, click closer together. And there we are. So now I just go around the image. It does take a little while to do, but it's definitely worth the effort in the end. Be really careful around that rounded edge there. 
just bear with me as I go around. Now once again, I've got a lot of fluke here. It's going to be very hard for me to see where that fluke begins and ends. And I can understand why the program itself said, wait a minute here, what is this? Is it floor? Is it dog? We don't know what it is. So I'm just going to cut it out of the image. It's relevant information. I don't need it. I'm going to follow it very carefully around the feet down here. Lots of little clicks to make sure that what I get is going to look nice in the end. If you rush it, you're going to wish you hadn't and end up having to redo it. So do take your time. Alrighty. That's the hard bit done. Once again, very difficult to tell where the dog and the floor end. So I'm just going to pretend I know where it is and I'm going to make forage my own path. Make my own path. selecting around as we go if you do stuff up on one you can just hit the backspace key and it'll go back to the previous clip point continue on there just do a couple clicks around here to get that shape you get that cute rounded face this dog will work nicely as a toy or a um, sort of cartoony looking dog for my comics. Okay, we want to get right back up to where we originally clicked. And if we click back on the original spot, it then selects the dog. Before I put this dog into a new canvas, I actually want to add, edit it a little bit to change the look and feel of it. In order to do that, I need to use some filters and adjustments. One of the filters that I really like is the Glamour Glow. There's a lot of different ones in here and feel free to play around with them, experiment. I like the Glamour Glow and as you can see it sort of darkened the image up here. And that's pretty, pretty much what I wanted. There are other filter effects that I could use such as Pixelate for instance which is really you know, popular at the moment, the old-fashioned pixelated styles, and I can adjust the sizes of that to determine how many pixels are in the image. I don't really want a pixelized image, but I'm just going to pretend I accidentally clicked OK. Oh no, that's not what I wanted. Panic stations, it's all right, free. You can un simply undo that action by going to your history window, just here on the right-hand side, and the last action that you liked. And there goes the pixelate. Problem solved. Let's mess around with some of the adjustments as well. We can choose, let's choose brightness and contrast. So if I slide these bars up and down, you're going to see that it changes the image. Okay? And I really like that defined contrast, as you can see. That's really quite nice. Not too much because I don't want to lose too much of the character in the eyes, so I'm going to click OK to that. Now, this dog's been modified a little bit to my purposes. Um, there's a lot of other adjustments that I could do to it. I could turn it black and white. I could do, I could add other filters like blur and so forth, but I'm pretty happy with this image as it stands. So, I'm ready to go ahead and copy this dog out of this image and into another one. So once again, using my shortcut key for copy, which is control C. Go up to file, new image. Once again, the window pops up and we're gonna give it a name. We're gonna say, new cute dog. Okay. And I do want a transparent background, so I'm gonna make sure I tick that as well. My transparent background has shown up here, and I'm going to paste it in, shortcut key, control, V. There's my cute little dog with a nice transparent background. Go to save. Once again, remembering that the JPEG format does not preserve transparency. Although this is quite cute with the white background, it's not what I want. I want a transparent background to use in my comics, so I need to change the format to PNG. And once again, we can see the checkers mean transparency. Click OK. Yes, I would like to save it to my desktop. 
Thank you, Mr. Computer, for asking that question. Hit save, and then we minimize so we can see the difference between the original and the new image there. So my new little cute dog has a nice transparent background. I can use him wherever I want now without interfering with the other images in my project. Once again, thank you very much for visit visiting my site and watching my tutorials. Happy editing!